Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss periodic trends. Today's essential question, what is the relationship between the power of the nucleus and the periodic trends? Here's the important part, power of the nucleus. And remember, when we're talking about power of the nucleus, we're talking about the, um, the nucleus's ability to hold onto its valence electrons. All right, uh, first 10 we're gonna talk about is the size of the atom, but before we talk about that, what do we mean? Um, when we're talking about the size of the atom, we usually talk about the atomic radius. So um, if this was the nucleus, and then out here we have the electron cloud, when we measure the size of the atom, we're measuring its radius. So whether I use the terminology size of the atom or atomic radius, we're really talking about the size. It's just, there you go. So, big question. What happens to the size of an atom as you go down a group? So we're going down a group. Think it through before I give you the answer. As you go down a group, the atom gets bigger. Or, if you prefer, you get the radius increases. So, of course, I'm going to ask you, why? Why does the atom get bigger going down a group? Think it through thinking power of the nucleus. What's happening to the power of the nucleus as we're going down a group? Well, the nucleus, the power of the nucleus, the, the power to hold its valence electrons is weaker or decreases going down a group. So again, why? Because we're adding energy levels, which is like adding shields, right? There's more stuff, more shields, more energy levels between the nucleus and the outermost valence electrons. Um, also, another way to think about it, and, and is also an important way to think about it, is that the valence electrons are further from the nucleus, okay? So, again, um, the atom gets larger when we go down a group because the nucleus is getting weaker because of the addition of energy levels, leading to valence electrons being further from the nucleus. So, what happens to this the size of the atom or atomic radius as you go across a period. So going this way. Well, the atom gets smaller. And of course, of course, I'm going to ask why? Think about it in terms of power of the nucleus. What's happening to the power of the nucleus is we're going left to right across the period. The nucleus is getting stronger as we go across a period. Why? Try to answer it. The nucleus gets stronger going across the period because we're, we're adding both protons and electrons, but the electrons are added to the same energy levels. So there's no extra shielding, um, leading to the nucleus holding the electrons more and more tightly, right? So we're getting, we're adding protons. We add protons. We do not, but not, shields or energy levels.
Okay, so again, going across a period, the atom gets smaller because the power of the nucleus, its ability to hold its valence electrons, gets stronger because of the addition of protons without the addition of more energy levels. All right, on to ionization energy. Um, you need to really think about the de definition of ionization energy as I'm going through this, okay? So ionization energy is um, how much energy an atom has to hold its own electrons. Or I guess another way to think about it is um, probably the more appropriate way to think about it is the amount of energy needed to remove a valence electron from an atom. Okay, so it's the amount of energy needed to remove a valence electron from an atom. If you have um, a high or large ionization energy, That means that the um, that it that it's it's difficult. It's difficult to remove an atom, to remove an electron. Okay, because it's hold, that that atom is holding its electrons really tightly. So high ionization energy means it takes a lot of energy, a lot of effort to remove that a valence electron. Okay, onward. So think about this, what type of atom is better able to keep hold of its own electrons? Or in what type of atom would it take a lot of energy to remove an electron? Well, an atom, a strong atom, right? Or another way to think about it is an, an atom with a strong nucleus. Um, and again, we want to think of effectively, effectively strong, okay? So um, looking at number of protons versus number of energy levels, okay? So you're going to have a greater ionization energy. It's going to take more energy to remove a valence electron from an atom that has an effectively strong nucleus. So keeping that in mind... I'm going to ask you a question like, what happens to ionization energy as you go down a group? Think it through. Think about power of the nucleus. What happens to the power of the nucleus as we go down a group? And then from there, what does that mean for ionization energy? Well, ionization energy should decrease as you go down a group. Why? What happens to the power of the nucleus going down a group again? Well, power of the nucleus decreases going down a group. Oh, why? Sorry. Power of the nucleus decreases going down a group or the nucleus gets weaker because energy levels are added, go added going down a group. Uh, just as added going, how about down a group? That says group, just go with me on that. Um, so the nucleus is shielded from the, out, um, from the outer electrons, and the nucleus cannot hold its electrons as tightly. So again, ionization energy is the energy needed to remove an electron, or how tightly an atom is holding its own electrons. You can look at it either way. Um, and because the nucleus gets, the power of the nucleus gets effectively weaker going down a group, that means it becomes successively easier and easier to remove an electron. So the ionization energy will decrease going down a group. Next up is what happens to ionization energy as you go across a period. Think about it. Think about it. Well, 
the ionization energy should increase. And of course, I'm going to ask you, why? Think power of the nucleus again. What happens to the power of the nucleus going across to period? Well, the nucleus gets effectively stronger going across to period because we're adding um, electrons to the same energy level. We're adding also at the same time more protons. Because the electrons are added to the same energy le level, there's no extra shielding, but we have a stronger nucleus, which leads to um, the uh, atom better able to hold its valence electrons. So going across the period, the nucleus is stronger, leading to an increase in ionization energy. It takes a lot more energy to remove an electron from atoms as you go from left to right across the period. All right, last topic for today is electronegativity. Um, as we're going through the definition and explanation of electronegativity, really think it through because the idea of electronegativity sounds like ionization energy, but they're actually the exact opposites. Okay, so electronegativity is in the energy an atom has to take extra electrons. So to this atom not only holds its own electrons, but has enough power, energy, electronegativity to gather extra electrons. So um, what type of atom is going to be better able to steal electrons or gather extra? Well, that would be a strong atom or an atom. Wow, it would be great if I could spell, huh? An atom with a larger or an atom with a, an effectively stronger nucleus. Okay, so with effectively stronger nucleus, again, we're, we're, we're comparing the number of protons versus the number of energy levels core electrons. Onward. So what happens to electronegativity as you go down a group? Keeping in mind, we're thinking about strong. We need stronger atoms to have more electronegativity or better ability to steal electro electrons. So it should decrease as you go down a group. Why? Well, the nucleus is weaker going down a group because um, energy levels are added going down a group. Sorry about that, again. Um, so the nucleus is shielded from the outer electrons, so the nucleus cannot hold its electrons as tightly. So, going down a group, electronegativity is going to decrease because we have an effectively weaker nucleus, because we are adding shields or energy levels, um, kind of like blocking the, um, the nucleus from the outer valence electrons. And last slide. What happens to electronegativity as you go across to period? Again, thinking about power of the nucleus, needing a effectively stronger nucleus to hold on to extra electrons. Well, electronegativity should increase. Why? The nucleus is stronger going across to period because, for the last time today, electrons are added to the same energy level. So we're also adding protons, but we're not adding shields or energy levels, so the nucleus is effectively stronger. So going across to period, electronegativity will increase because we have an effectively stronger nucleus due to adding protons, but not energy levels. Okay, folks, 
Um, really think this through and honestly don't try to memorize the periodic trends of the atomic size or radius, ionization energy or electronegativity. Understand the power of the nucleus and then you can talk yourself through the trends. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.